Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Simon Messer. I'm a junior doctor here. First, can I check your name and date of birth, please? Uh, Khalil Seka, 6th of March, 91. And how would you like to be addressed today? Uh, Khalil is fine. And you're 25, is that correct? Yes. Okay, pleasure to meet you, Khalil. Uh, the reason why I'm here today is to examine your lungs. Mm -hmm. And the way I'm going to do this is first by looking at your hands, moving up to your face, and then down to your chest, back and legs. Mm -hmm. uh, would that be okay with you today? Yeah, sure. Okay. Excuse me whilst I describe my findings to my colleague over here whilst I go along. Mm -hmm. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. First of all, are you in any pain at all? Uh, no. Okay, that's great. So, on first inspection, Khalil appears comfortable at rest. I can't see any oxygen or any inhalers by the side of the bed. There's no sputum pot to examine. Would you mind giving me a cough, Khalil? <coughs> okay, so there doesn't appear to be any uh, secretions in the upper airway. If the patient has a wet cough in finals, cystic fibrosis or another cause of bronchiectasis is the diagnosis. A patient with acute pneumonia is unlikely to be well enough to bring to examination. Okay. Now, do you mind just putting your hands up for me, Khalil? Okay, so I don't see any fine physiological tremor. So assessing the capillary refill time, which is less than two seconds. Looking at the nails, there doesn't appear to be any clubbing. If the patient has clubbing, they will have either pulmonary fibrosis, bronchiectasis, or a lung carcinoma. If the patient had a dry cough, this leaves pulmonary fibrosis or a lung carcinoma as the possible diagnoses. Or any coilinicia. I can't see any tar staining on the fingers. Uh, looking at the hands, there's no venous engorgement and there's no wasting of the first web space. Do you mind turning your hands over for me? I can't see any palmar erythema at all. Now, can you just cock your wrists back and hold it in that position? and there's no CO2 retention tremor. Okay, now I'm just going to feel your pulse on the right side. You can relax your left hand. Okay, and carry on relaxing. So pulse rate is approximately 72 beats per minute. and respiratory rate is 20 breaths per minute. Okay. There doesn't appear to be any bounding pulse at all. Okay. So ideally at this point, I would assess the patient's blood pressure. So do you mind just pulling your eyelids down for me? Okay. So there's no conjunctive or pallor. That's fine, you can relax for me. And I can't see any ptosis or signs of Horner's syndrome. The patient doesn't have a cushingoid appearance and there's no nasal flaring or pursed lip breathing. Can you just open your mouth for me, please? Okay. So there's no oral candidiasis and there's no central cyanosis, which is visible. Okay. Now, do you mind turning your head just over to the right hand side? Okay. So I can see a double pulsation between the heads of sternocleid and mastoid. And do you have any pain in your stomach at all? No. So I'm just going to press down. And the hepatojugular reflux is present. And the JVP is approximately two centimeters above the sternal angle. Okay, so now I'm just going to check for the position of your windpipe on your neck. Okay, and it appears to be central. And the cricosternal distance is approximately two and a half fingers. Okay, so now looking at the chest, uh, it appears to be absolutely normal with some symmetry. Uh, there are no scars from surgery and uh, I can't see uh, any obvious chest wall deformities. Do you mind putting your hands up for me? Okay, so again, I can't see any pneumonectomy scars on underneath the axilla on both sides. So now I'm just going to feel for your heartbeat, which is present in the fist intercostal space midclavicular line. And I'm feeling for any parasternal heaves, which could be as a result of respiratory disease, which is not present. Okay. Now what I'd like you to do is breathe all the way out for me and then take a deep breath in. That's great. And if you could do the same again. Just one more time. Okay, that's fine. So chest expansion is symmetrical. Another key finding in finals is chest asymmetry. 
stable causes include kyphoscoliosis, a previous lobectomy, and a pleural effusion. Okay, uh, you can breathe normally. Okay, now I'm just going to tap on your chest. Okay, and I'm just going to listen. What I'd like you to do is take a deep breath in and out, and then do the same every time I put the stethoscope on. Thank you. That's fine. And if you can say 99 for me. 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99. Great. Now I'd like to do the same on the back, please, if you don't mind just sitting forward. Okay, so on first inspection of the back, there appear to be no abnormalities. Again, there are no scars from previous surgery, and I can't see any previous chest drain insertion sites on the side. Okay, so now if you could do the same as before, take a full breath out and then deep breath in for me. That's fine, and the same again. Okay, so there's symmetrical chest expansion on both sides. Now I'm just going to tap on each side, you can breathe normal. Okay, and can you just try and put your arms across your shoulders for me? Just like this, great. And I'm just going to listen on the back. So if you can take some deep breaths. And again. And again. And again. And again. One more time. And if you can say 99 for me. 99. 99. 99. 99. 99. That's great. So if you can stay leaning forward, I'm just going to feel some nodes in the neck. So posterior cervical chain, postauricular, occipital, preauricular, submandibular, submental, anterior cervical chain, and supraclavicular. And I can't feel any pancos tumors. Okay, so just feeling at the bottom of your back, there's no sacral edema. And you can relax back for me. So looking at the feet, can't see any obvious edema uh, on either side, and there's no asymmetry, which would indicate a deep vein thrombosis. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Can you briefly present your findings, please? Yes, uh, so this was Khalil. He's a 25 year old gentleman. I examined him today. I couldn't find any positive findings. Pertinent negative findings include. Khalil being comfortable at rest with no obvious upper airway secretions. There were no peripheral signs of lung disease in the hands, face, or even the legs. Uh, looking at the chest, there was good uh, chest expansion on the anterior and posterior chest, as well as uh, being normal vesicular breath sounds in all lung areas, as well as no added sounds. In conclusion, this was a completely normal uh, chest examination. Thank you. And I, I would complete by uh, performing a cardiovascular exam, as well as uh, taking a full history to determine the impact of the symptoms on the patient's quality of life, as well as performing any indicated investigations at the bedside uh, with imaging, uh, using blood tests, or any special tests. Yeah. Great, thank you. What signs might you see in Horner syndrome? Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, that would be due to disruption of the sympathetic innervation of uh, either side of the face or both sides. Uh, and that would result in uh, meiosis, which is constriction of the eye, as well as ptosis and um, a lack of sweating on that side of the eye. Okay, and what sorts of differentials like? Um, so this could be due to either central disruption of the sympathetic chain or peripheral. Uh, centrally, this could be things like uh, multiple sclerosis or tumors. Uh, peripherally, it could be anywhere along the line. So it could be uh, at the T1 route, which uh, could include um, any, any kind of cervical ribs or uh, disruption. Uh, they could be in the brachial plexus as well, which could be previous trauma or, or potentially pancos tumors. It could be uh, in the neck, so previous surgery or uh, carotid artery aneurysms or even trauma again. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you.